Hello. Today's notebook comes from uh, three questions asked on uh, either the Quantitative Stack Exchange Forum or the Quantly main list. They all deal with uh, building bonds uh, in Quantly, which are not as regular as the, the, the vanilla ones that are provided um, as, as built-in classes. For instance, first question was uh, uh, a user had a bond which had the last coupon well, not a last coupon, it didn't have a last coupon. That is to say, the last, uh, the real, the actual last coupon paid before maturity. Then there was an, an, a, an, another period in which the bond didn't pay coupon. And then there was the maturity of the bond and the redemption. Uh, you can't model this directly in Quantly, directly as in instantiating a particular bond and uh, mm, that's and, and, and with, with these exact characteristics, but you can get close enough. The simplest thing, the one that requires less, probably less work, is to um, instantiate a fixed rate bond and give it a, a regular fixed rate bond and give it a last coupon with a rate of uh, with a null rate, a rate of zero percent. So in this case, we would build the schedule of the bond and create it with the required coupon rate for the number of uh, mm, for all the coupons but the second one and uh, then a rate of zero so the bond fixed rate bond class accepts a list of uh, different coupon rates we pass this and we can see here the resulting coupon so we have uh, coupons with the rate of 2% up to one year before maturity and then a coupon with 0% rate and so no amount, no payment for the last period and the final uh, redemption and uh, you can do the same thing for floating rate coupon it is possible to pass uh, to a floating rate coupon both a vector of uh, multipliers for the for the the rate which is paid and uh, uh, so same thing number of coupon is n n minus one multipliers at one and the last one is at zero so here you get the required payments except uh, you might want to display this cash flow analysis so you may want to to um, to, to um, display the coupons and uh, having this fake coupon paying 0% is a bit sloppy. If you want to do a slightly more work, you can customize the bond so that it's, it's exactly what, uh, uh, what you need. For instance, okay, we instantiated this bond. These are the cash flows as, uh, as, 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 um, as we built it. What we can do is we extract them from the cash flow we delete uh, and we take all, uh, only the ones we want that is this cash flows these are all but the last two so I cancel the the, 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 the one before the redemption and I create a new bond with the generic class bond passing directly the cash flows I want. So this gives me a bond with exactly the coupons that are actually paid and nothing else. The same thing of course holds for the for the fixed rate bond. You can extract the coupons, uh, delete the, the, the fake one and recreate a bond. Second question was uh, for uh, a fixed floater coupon. Again, no instrument in the library at this time, at least, that uh, lets you instantiate this directly. But we can do something similar to what we did uh, in the in the previous case. So let's say we we want three fixed rate coupons and then a switch to seven floating rate coupons for ten years total. What we do is we can create, well, one thing we can do is we can create the three fixed rate coupons. So a schedule starting today for three years 
and the corresponding fixed rate lag. Then from that uh, date to the maturity date, a schedule, a seven-year schedule, and the corresponding floating rate coupons. Finally, we put them together. We add a redemption, and again we use the custom class bond to instantiate to, to, to create the final instrument. Again, this is the cash flow analysis. Here is the rate of the coupon. You can see the three fixed one, the seven floating rate ones, and the redemption. However, there might be uh, well, this is simple enough, but there might be a problem with this. Uh, with the construction of the schedules, namely, we are building from today to three years from now and from that day to the maturity. What might happen here is that uh, this uh, date, three years for today, might be adjusted with respect to, to this one, by which I mean, let's say this is um, September 4th, this might be September fifth or six three years later due to holidays weekends and what you have which and this might get uh, the the second part of the schedule a bit off since this second part would, would be based from the sixth instead of the fourth as as uh, requested by the issue there to the bond in this case what you can do is we build the whole schedule so that we have the the, the correct dates we build the fixed rate and uh, uh, fixed rate coupon and uh, uh, live floating rate coupon over the whole schedule and then we just pick the ones we want so the first three fixed and uh, the all but the first three floating again we combine all the cash flows in one and uh, we create a custom bond with that and here is the here is the schedule in this case i think we didn't have the problem the schedule is the same but well we might have so this is the the, the safe thing to do i'm going to skip this which is a, some kind of a hack and i'm going straight to the first third question so the idea here was a bond well in the question there was a swap but uh, i'm using the bond class so you can use the the the, the custom swap class uh, to to build the custom swaps instead uh, so what was the problem a, a, a leg with a six months coupon pay, um, um, semi-annual coupon paying six months your labor your labor but uh, the the first uh, coupon was a short stub and it paid the fiction of the three months index instead so you can't just uh, well let's say we instantiate the indexes first so we have uh, this is this the six months index and uh, oh this is an actual error let's fix it so the three month index with uh, a flat curve at uh, 15 basis point this the, the six month index with a curve at with the with flat at 20 basis points okay if we we might create a schedule with a, a short first a short first rate this well what we do is we start from the, the, the start date of the, the, the swap or the bond or whatever and then the end date is calculated as five years plus three months from the start date. Generating the schedule backwards gives us a short first coupon so we start from the end, six months coupon from going backwards from the end and we get the, the, the required schedule except uh, we create the, 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 the if we create the, the, the leg we are forced to pass one single index and this gives us the correct schedule so start from October to January three months and then six months but uh, we are getting the wrong the wrong fixing this should be the three months uh, index and uh, 
fix at uh, 15 basis points, not, uh, not 20. To use the right one, again, we have to modify the, the, the cash flows. So what we can do is, uh, well, we take the cash flows that we generated and we, we take the first one, we extract the dates which are correct, so the date, the, 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 the payment date, the start and end date for the, for the, for the coupon, the, 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 the notional that we are going to use, but we build a coupon which instead has a three months index, we set the coupon the price which is required for, for having the correct results. So well, the, the model we want in this case is just a simple fixing of the, the simple black hybrid prices, black price that, that give us the fixing of the, the forecast curve. And we create a new cash flow vector with the first one, the, the, the new one that we just created and then the rest of the cash flows and uh, this gives us uh, the correct uh, index and rate for the for the first uh, coupon as before we can take these cash flows and use the, 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 the custom bond or swap class to instantiate the instrument that we need okay that would be all for this uh, for this uh, screencast uh, thanks again for listening and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.